Um, so I wouldn't, I'm very happy to be here and very excited to give a talk at the first biotechnology conference I've ever attended. And I would like to tell you something about the project I did in the Greifswald last year, which is about male vibratory courtship in Pisaro mirabilis and if it influences the predatory behavior of the females. Now, um, they have all the top, top talks about communication, so I would also like to start there again. Um, and I understand communication to be one individual sending a signal that influences the behavior of another individual. And now, as there are many different kinds of organisms in the world that have different ways of perceiving their environment, there are also different ways of signaling. For example, visual signals or um, chemical signals, and what we are doing right now, which are auditory signals. And then the substrate-borne vibratory signals um, are very common in many taxa, as we have heard today, but they're often neglected. For example, I didn't actually think about this at all until more than a year ago, when I first introduced to this research area. Now, I also, when I first heard about it, the thing I thought about immediately were spiders, because they heavily rely on vibrations, for example, for prey detection in the web. Um, and now, since spiders also are generally a solitary species, most communication between spiders will take place in a sexual context between males and females, and then particularly during courtship and copulation. So as you can see here in this web building species, I think it's a gyopee, you can see a male shaking in the web. Um, but also in cursorial spiders, such as in Pisano mirabilis, as you can see here and you've seen before during Morgan's talk. Now the, re the question is of course, what exactly is the purpose of this vibratory courtship? And one thing Bicknell and Hermestein actually discovered in 2013 is that the vibratory courtship of the males in Agaiope can serve to delay female predation. And the reason for that might be because the males need to traverse the web to reach the female and perform additional courtship. So before they can actually reach the female, it would be very nice if not attacked by the female. And as you can see in this graph, that if you play back the vibratory courtship, that the number of females that are responding to prey is quite delayed compared to if you play back white noise or if you don't play back anything. So what about cursorial spiders? Because there is no web that the males need to traverse, and generally the males are relatively similar in body size to the females. But they still need to reach the female, right? And so my question was, is this function of the male vibratory courtship in Pisaro mirabilis similar in that it could delay female predation? Maybe it also serves as species recognition. My hypothesis was that it would actually serve to delay female predation or predatory behavior. And the reason for that is because I have seen that the females are quite sensitive to many vibrations. And they are able to tackle prey that are of a relatively similar body size. So, I'll tell you a little bit about Pisaro mirabilis again. It's a cursorial spider where the males provide an optional gift to the females. And this vibratory courtship of the males is triggered when they taste the female dragline silks with their pedipalps, which is very nice for us because it means we can entice the male to perform the behavior when we want. So the way I did it, um, I had a, a, a plastic pipe with some fabric spun over it and I used laser vibrometer to record vibrations. And then I added the female first and let her walk around and deposit drag lines. And then after a while, you can remove the female, and you can add the male. And the male will stumble upon the drag lines and start performing vibratory courtship. So I uh, look at the, I extracted the, no, that's not what I want to say. I exported the vibratory courtship from the males to um, Audacity where I checked the signal and I selected a part that had some very nice repetitive courtship bouts, which then looped to get to a recording of about 10 minutes to play back to the females. So this is a comparison because of course you want to check if the signal that we play back is actually similar to the courtship of the male. So the green line represents the original vibratory courtship of the male and the red line represents the recording of the playback of this courtship. And the graph shows you the proportion of waves of a particular frequency. So it looks relatively similar, up until 1,000 hertz, where you can see that the proportion of waves in the playback of the vibrations is a bit lower compared to the original recording. 
Um, I figured it wouldn't really matter because after a thousand hertz, there is a low proportion of waves anyway. And these species can generally be found upon plants and they are not very good generally at, um, for higher frequencies anyway. So I figured it would be fine. So next is the setup. Um, I used a vibration generator to play back the treatment. And I added a prey cage um, to, uh, for the prey, of course, to prevent the spiders from actually catching the prey. Uh, the reason for that is because we took repeated measures of the males, uh, of the females, sorry. And if the females could actually catch the prey, then they might become less interested in the prey the next time. So the best thing to do would be to prevent the females from actually being able to seize the prey. So the treatments consisted of playback of the courtship in this blue uh, vibrations, or process of white noise in yellow, or nothing, which is the gray line. Then I recorded some predatory behaviors of the females. So the first thing is the orientation of the females to the prey. And I counted both the number of times this behavior happened during the five minutes of observation and the latency, which is the first time this behavior happened. Next, I also looked at the uh, number of times and the time they spent near the prey and how long it took them to perform to get near the prey for the first time and also the attack of the females on the prey. I was also interested to see if the females would also respond to the playback, which in this case equals a response to the vibration generator, really. So I again looked at the orientation of the females to the vibration generator and the time they spent near the vibration generator. So let's look at the results. Um, there are three graphs here that show you the predatory behaviors of the females. And they're binary, so they show the number of females that either did or did not perform this behavior. And on the left, you have the um, orientation of the spiders to the prey. In the middle, the spiders actually get near the prey. And in the right graph shows you the attack of the spiders on the prey. And the left two bars shows you the behavior during the courtship playback. And the middle one for the white noise and the right one for the silence treatment. Now, as you might be able to tell, is that most spiders actually did perform this behavior in, uh, for all three of these behaviors. Um, but there were no differences between treatments. So spiders generally reacted in the same way to the prey. Now here you can see the uh, latency of these spiders, uh, predatory uh, behaviors to the prey. And these are also cox proportional hazards. They're a little different though, in that you can see the increase of the females over time that are responding to the prey. And so again, you have the blue line for the courtship, the yellow line for the white noise treatment, and the gray line for if you don't play back anything at all. And you have the free predatory behaviors. And here also, there's no difference in how the spiders are responding to the prey. So the treatment doesn't seem to have an effect on the predatory behavior at all. Now, if we look at the behavior of the females to the playback, um, there are again two binary graphs. So it shows you if the spiders did not or did respond to the uh, generator. And here we actually have a difference in that if you look at if the spider oriented to the generator, they did it more often if you play back courtship than if you play back nothing, which sort of makes sense because if there's nothing that's being played back, there's nothing to orient to. So that's not really surprising, to be honest. Um, but this does not translate to a difference in if the spiders actually get near the generator. Um, because there, there is no difference between treatments, meaning that spiders generally did not get near the generator, and if they did, it's the same for all the treatments. And then we can look at the latency, so the time it takes them to perform this behavior for the first time. And there's a small difference, again, between the courtship trip playback and the silent playback, because during the silent playback, they don't actually ever really orient to the generator. So there's a small difference there in latency as well. But there's no difference in latency in it when they get near the generator. So to summarize, there's no effect of treatment on female predatory response. And to which I conclude that male vibratory courtship actually does not delay a female predatory behavior. And the reason is, of course, uh, the question is why is that? What could be the reason? 
Now, one thing I thought of maybe is that the risk of predation for these males is already relatively low. Uh, again, there's no web to traverse, and they carry an optional gift. So even if the female would respond aggressively to the males, they might actually seize the gift instead of the male. So there might be no reason for them to, be, uh, to delay any female predatory behavior. Another reason could be that maybe the, the playback of the vibratory courtship alone is just not sufficient. Um, because in nature, the males, for example, move around while performing this courtship, whereas we play back the courtship from a stationary point, and there is no male, so there's also no additional uh, visual stimuli, and the males generally also perform other courtship behaviors, such as rewrapping the gift in silk, or approaching the female, touching the female, and offering the, the gift to the female in typical position, which are all absent from our treatment. So perhaps the vibratory courtship alone is just not sufficient to have an effect on the female predatory behavior. So what could the function be of the vibratory courtship? Well, as Morgan showed you, uh, males differ in the, their uh, vibratory courtship performance. And we also know that body condition affects the courtship performance. So possibly male vibratory courtship serves as species recognition and could be a quality signal. I would like to thank my supervisors, Monica Eberhardt and Gabriele, for their very helpful uh, comments. I'd also like to thank the research group in Greifswald for um, also providing very many helpful comments. I would like to thank the International Office from Greifswald for financing my research. And finally, I would like to thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them.